Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Arthur East Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brockton Boxers, and today it is the biggest game of the season. In addition to being senior night here for the Lady Boxers against the Hanover Indians, it's one of those special playoff scenarios. You win, you're in, you lose, and you're out unless you get a little bit of help from your big three divisional rivals. The Brockton Lady Boxers come in at nine and 10, of course, to get into the MIAA playoffs. You have to win at least 10 games or win the division. So there's the asterisk. Brockton wins tonight, they're in the dance. If they lose, Durfee and New Bedford are playing at the same time as this game is happening. Durfee has to win that game at home. If they do that, the Brockton Lady Boxers are in the playoffs by virtue of winning the big three divisional title. Annalicia Fernandez winning the tip. Back to Josilma Montrond, a couple of the Boxers seniors. Jamari Johnson is the other one. She also gets the start tonight. Jade went to Elizabeth Fernandez. They round out the boxers on the floor. Fernandez driving inside, kicks it out to uh, Williams, excuse me. Williams now inside out to Montron. Montron to Fernandez. Williams deep three and it's wow. good. What a deep three. Way downtown and the boxers are on the board. First three to nothing, Brockton. Hanover is wearing their visiting navy blue jerseys gold trim around the white numbers rocking in their home whites with red trim around the black numbers and this is number 35 that is Janie devlin and brockton comes up with the ball jade went who has easily been one of the top two performers on the boxers this year along with annalicia fernandez williams now over to fernandez Williams leaving it behind for Jade Wint. She takes a three and it's off the back of the rim. No good, but Fernandez chasing down the rebound. She sends it back out to just about half court for Elizabeth Williams. Three nothing boxers. And Annalicia Fernandez being scouted heavily by multiple colleges over to Montrond. Her three no good off the back of the rim. Hanover with the uncontested rebound. Worth mentioning, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson joined alongside tonight special broadcast partner Vanilton Xavier of the Brockton High School freshman team here sitting courtside for the first time. <laughs> feels good, feels good. So watching Brockton Boxers play, it's a dream. The foul called on Annalicia Fernandez, 6-17 to go in the first quarter. This is Devlin, missed her first attempt, hits her second. Just about two minutes into the first quarter, Hanover yet to hit anything from the field. This is Montron, she first takes shot. a three and it's no good. A Little bit too much spin on it, out of play off of Brockton, Hanover takes over. Good passing by the Indians. And they convert the layup. That was, I believe, Bridget O'Connor. And Alicia Fernandez with the ball. Fernandez spinning, trying to find some open space to shoot it. She does, gets her own rebound, puts it back up, no good. Williams fighting for the rebound and out of play off of the Indians. Brockton playing with a little bit of extra motivation. Not only wanting to perform here on senior night, but that all important playoff scenario. Fernandez on the foul. Taylor Scott called for the push. Fernandez is at the line. 5.22 to go in the first, all tied up at three. A 
Ronnie Montero, Jayla Smith, and they replace the two seniors, Jamari Johnson and Justil Montrond. Good hands for Vanilton. <laughs> Ball coming right over to us. I would have had it. I figured I'd give the freshman a chance. <laughs> you know, when you play the sports yourself, you gotta make sure you control the ball first, right? So everyone says. We did give you the warning. That's a nice block for Elizabeth Williams. We did give you the warning before the game. Things come flying over to us. Yeah. Players, balls, shoes, you name it. We've had it flung at us top speed. There's Annalise here, Fernandez. Speaking of running into our crew, <laughs> runs into our very own Rob Curry under the basket. What a steal. Another steal by Williams. She gives it to and Fernandez. She takes a three. It's going to be short. But Jayla Smith scrapping for the rebound. Unable to keep it in play. Hanover with the ball. Reflecting it out of play was Elizabeth Williams. You can tell the boxer's strategy, clog the passing lanes, doesn't matter if it goes out of play, do not let them get in the paint. Yeah. And rebound. Keyword for the boxer. What a steal from Lerman Montero. Montero in the world puts it up, no good. But gets the rebound. <laughs> Fernandez drives a foul. It. Crazy, right huh? to Montero. Yeah. 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 Run into uh, that's going to go against Jamie Devlin. So speaking of Durfee High School, there was a threat called in there earlier. Basically. A couple of schools around Massachusetts got calls at the same time that what happened in Florida could happen in here. Vegas is going to happen at those schools. Derpy, one of them. What a great defense on the line, It's unbelievable for a freshman to be on varsity, huh? Montero, uh, Williams. Sending the ball out of play. Timeout on Hanover. So it's 6 to 3, 4 oh, 8 to go in the first. Brockton is on top here on senior night. Vanilton, the easiest path for the boxers. Take care of business tonight. Don't leave it up to another team to get you into the playoffs. I know. Just got to play your game one by one. Speaking of the tragedy in Florida. A couple of school shootings and threats called in around the country and that's it's not funny if you're a teenager and you want to see what effect you can have. It's not an experiment. It's not funny. It causes a lot of panic. Especially the parents that have to send their kids to these schools Ooh, and yeah. not hear from them for, for hours. six plus hours. Something not to joke about, huh? Annalie Lorenzo, Jay. the three point sharpshooter, okay. missing her first attempt offensive foul on Annalicia Fernandez, her second personal. Tannis is going to come in to replace her. This is Devlin down to Catherine Fallon, the junior. There's only three seniors on this Hanover team as well as three on the boxers. Those are Bridget O'Connor, Taylor Scott, and Lauren what Kelly. What a big defensive captains. rebound.
Williams driving inside her Rebecca layup Tennis with long. the rebound, and she puts it up for two. Tennis has been strong all season, especially in the paint. Now it is Devlin. The boxers wreaking havoc in the paint so far. This short jumper is good for Lauren Gelly. Williams to Jade Wentz, went to Lorenzo. Lorenzo back to Williams. Now went for three off the back of the rim, no good. Brought down by Taylor Scott. What a great pass. What a great pass. Aaron Flynn converting that layup. What a great screen. What a great roll. The travel is called against Jade Wynn, so the Indians take over. 2.12 to go in the first. It's 8 to 7. And the boxers on top. Good ball movement for the Indians here. And now it's Devlin for three, it's no, no good. good. Went coming down with the rebound. Rebecca down low. Oh. Broken up a tennis, scrapping for it, a lot of spin on it, winds up in the hands of Gelly. She gives it over to Fallon. Now Devlin for Gelly and just off oh, the good. mark for Aaron Flynn. Fast paced game so far in the first quarter, a minute 38 to go. Gelly sending it back for number 33. Her layup is good. That's Taylor Scott. Yeah. Gelly hit the floor. Slowed down the game. Time on call for the boxers with one minute and 13 seconds left. Boxers down by one. So it's 9 8. Now Hanover on top, 113 to go. Time out by head coach Chris Connolly. He spoke with us pre-game about the playoff picture, and he said, we're very worried about the Durfee game because Hanover has been a strong team. The update as of nine minutes ago, Durfee is beating New Bedford 32 to 23. So if Durfee wins, Brockton's in. If Brockton wins, it's a lot easier and Brockton's in. Meanwhile, the Brockton High boys basketball team is at Catholic Memorial in a heavyweight matchup. They have a couple of games left before their tournament run already having clinched a playoff berth. 17 and one are the men's team. Hand over the ball. This is Taylor Scott. Working back and forth with Aaron Flynn. Jade Wynn oversteps the steal attempt. Devlin fouled on the way up. And she'll get the line for a couple of shots. 52.1 to go in the first quarter. First shot is good. Handover up by two. 52 seconds left of the first quarter. And makes both. That puts the Indians up by a couple, 11 to eight. Under a minute to go, 45 seconds. Elizabeth Williams trying to set up the boxer offense. Her floater no good. Jade Wint in the right place at the right time. Count it and one for Jade Wint. That has been Jade Wentz bread and butter all year. Get in the paint, grab the rebound, 
Puts foul. it right back up and People draws a foul. People are always willing to follow Jade Wint. And she converts the free throw attempt. Her play style is unbelievable for a junior. She's poised to be the Annalisa Fernandez of next year's of team. Next year's team. Right. One thing we're noticing about the handover team, they don't dribble a lot. Yeah, they're passing, I feel like they're passing screen away. Final 10 seconds left, boxes with the ball, tie game, first quarter. No shot clock, now nine seconds to go. Make it five. Jay Ben with the ball. Went spinning, shooting uh, for three, no good. It's going to go out of play as the buzzer sounds. We're all tied up at 11 after the end of the first quarter. The leaders, Jade Wintz. Jamie Devlin for the Indians. It's 11 to 11. Brockton holding on to their edge of their seats. Waiting for the score update from Fall River. That game tipping off half an hour, well, about 45 minutes before this one. So big game, Brockton hoping to get in. They would be one of the lower seeds in the South Sectional Tournament, so they'd be on the road, no home game for the Lady Boxers. The Brockton boys team guaranteed a home game which they strongly are looking forward to, kicking off their tournament run here at Staff Gymnasium. Handle the ball to start the second quarter. Inbounding is Catherine Fallon. She gets it into Janie Devlin. So Vanilton, what'd you see in the first quarter? And what does Rockin have to do to put this game away and turn on the gas? I feel like Hanover was moving the ball very quick on the press and they broke it really quickly. I feel like the boxers have to be more aggressive on the ball. Speaking of aggressive, the shortest member of the Brockton boxers scrapping on the floor, that is Jayla Smith. Forcing the jump ball. And Layla Tapina into the game for her first minutes. Sends it in for Elizabeth Williams. Jade Wint takes a three. It's going to be no, off the mark. And over with the rebound. That's Catherine Fallon. Now Fallon sending it over to Emily Flynn. Now back to Devlin. Devlin takes 16 steps with it. Not called for the travel. <laughs> Wint tapping it to Williams on the rebound. And Brockton has the ball. Went to the Pina. Down low to Rebecca Tannis. Tannis uh, knocks down. And Hanover comes up with the ball. This is Flynn. Uh, Her three is blocked by Williams. As Fernandez is going to come back into the game for Brock. And Williams driving all the way inside off the glass and in. <laughs> Thirteen eleven, the boxers what back with the lead and the foul. And Counted in one for Claire Connolly, the freshman. Down low, and it's going to go against Rebecca Tennis. She's called for the block. That is the foul against the boxers. So now Connolly with a chance to give the Indians back the lead. The good news for the boxers, or bad news depending on how you look at it. Durfee is beating New Bedford 39-26, 13 point lead for the Indians midway, uh, the Indians, the Hilltoppers, excuse me, and midway sorry. through the third. The bad news is that Durfee's best player, Shaylin Ferrero, has four fouls. Much the same situation she was in here at Staff Gymnasium. Williams at the line for a couple of shots. Nice one, no good. To 
Soma Montron back on the floor as well as Annalicia Fernandez. Williams one or two at the line, 14 to 13, Brockton on top by one. And what has turned into one of those scrappy games that is kind of shot for shot. And the rebounding is going to play a very big part in this game today, yeah. Great. It's a long two off the mark. What a great ball from Alicia. All the way to the back. Alicia Fernandez definitely, along with Jade Wink, the boxers power in the paint. Jayla Smith takes a three, that's Good short. Point. Fernandez tipping the rebound to Wint. No good, Wint Again. getting her own rebound, puts it up no good, and Handover comes down with that rebound. Man, this, one, this Handover team loves to pass and cut. Williams to Wint. With the midi, no good shot. Fernandez bumping into Connolly, no foul. Call Fernandez already with two personals. Now uncontested three, that one's long. Offensive board for Taylor Scott. And a jump ball. We're gonna have a foul called on uh, Claire Connolly. Rule she grabbed and did not get all ball, but a piece of the arm of one of the boxers. Four and a half to go in the first half. It's 14 to 13, the boxers, but Hanover coming up with the steal. It's Jeannie Devlin. Milani Montero going to come back into the game for the boxers. Uh, that oh, call, that call. What a good attempt from Jade. It's gonna go against Jade Wynn. Crowd for the hit. The boxer crowd thought she got all ball on the block. First free throw no good from Claire Conley. And Elani Montero had just checked in for Jacinto Montero. Vanilton, as we've seen a few times here this season, free throws gonna be a big part of this one. And that's a field in which the boxers really excel at between Fernandez, Wint, and Williams. Very good from the line. No. They like to use the advantage of putting Jade and, uh, and Alicia down the post to get easy buckets. You know, uh, what a what, uncontested three from number 44, Emily Slim. Taylor Scott's going to come back into the game for the and Indians. Alicia threw with the, uh, that short. one's well off the mark. Hanover coming down with the ball, three and a half to go in the second. All tied up at 16. What a great pass. And number 24, Aaron Flynn converting the layup as the Indians take the lead. Time out, Boxers, three minutes, 22 seconds left in the second quarter. Boxers down by two. Time out called by Chris Connolly, 18 to 16. Your score, the Indians are on top for the moment. This has been a shot for shot kind of game. Foul for foul, both teams with five. I feel like the rebounding and uh, making a free throw is probably going to win the game. The boxers have run into trouble at points this year. Jade Winton and Alicia Fernandez. Down in the paint, called for a lot of over the backs, a lot of hits. They get scrappy while fighting for the rebounds. That's something the boxers, if they have a hope to win this game, need to control. For the Indians, it's Janie Devlin, Taylor Scott, the two most effective. The boxers have to stop them. J. 
Jade went long to uh, a couple bounces good. off the rim. It's good. If she was six inches back, it would have been a three. That's going to be a backcourt violation against the Indians. Very close as midair was Taylor Scott. And a very good eye from the official on the far side. Blowing that whistle. Boxers take over. And Alicia Fernandez as Jamari Johnson sets the screen. Now Williams called for the travel. Williams making the switch from center to point guard this year in Chris Connolly's first year system. Uh, what a trouble at times for Williams, but another thing I think the boxes need to work on the communication. Just to know where they are on the offense. Fernandez driving inside and she draws the block against Scott. Scott looks a little bit hurt. Leg a little bit. Aaron Flynn has checked in for number 33, Taylor Scott, with two minutes and 38 Coach. seconds left. Send him all the way down to the X. Fernandez to Nelani Montero as a couple of players hit the floor. Taylor Smith driving inside to the basket, Taylor, no uh, good. A couple of offensive boards. And Alicia Fernandez draws a foul. That's very hustle. No, it's not board. a jump ball. They're saying it's a jump ball. Both teams lining up for an Alicia to, to shoot free throws. <laughs> That's not a jump ball. Clearly a foul. Fernandez was putting up a shot and she was very clearly blocked. On we go. 18 to 18, two minutes to go in the second quarter. What a, see, rebounders will win your games. You know, Lisa is looking like she has a couple boards on her stats. Throwing the game down. There's Williams with it. And you know, Alicia posting up. Will she draw the foul? Giving her the fits was Lauren Gelly. Now in. Fernandez from the stripe, no good. Hanover comes down with the rebound. Jade Wint, Italy Lorenzo getting ready to come into the game. Lorenzo has had points in games where she gets hot and nails down five or six in a game. threes in, in a row. Box is hoping for one of those runs from number four. Lorenzo, Taylor Smith, Jamari Johnson take a seat on the bench. 121 to go in the half. It's looking like the box is playing his own right now. What a great start, that. What a great Euro start. Bigger roll there for Jamie Devlin. And Alicia Fernandez bringing up the ball. Williams slipping with it. Now off to Wint, her three is short. She's got to slow down the game. Fallon coming down with the ball. Hanover loves the no bounce passing. Yeah, they love that. That's something that they've been working on, I could just tell by it. Jay with the second personal. I think she got it like coming down, down low. Keep your hands up. Some breaking news update. At the end of the third quarter, Durfee leading New Bedford 48-34. They hang on. Brockton will clinch a playoff berth regardless of the outcome of this game. Man, it's looking like New Bedford's putting on the show right now. Hernandez with it. 35 seconds to go. There's a 11 second difference between shot clock and game clock. Brockton's gonna waste out a majority of that before they take a shot. Nelani Montero off, off the, the glass. glass. And in. Shot clock off, 20 seconds to go in the first half. 21-20, 
Hanover on top. That's a travel that was not called on Aaron Too Flynn. Wow. Now a double dribble not called. Jade Wynn coming down with the rebound. Ten seconds to go. Brockton's got time to fire off a shot if they can get up court. Williams with it, driving all the way inside. It's a foul. Oh, one up. No foul no called. Foul called. We're gonna have a foul called as Williams and in the half at tie game. Well, then they're not gonna call the foul at the end of the, the half. So at the end of the first half, it's 21 to 21, all tied up. Hanover and Brocken. They're gonna say that the half was waved off before the foul was committed. So Vinilton. Very back and forth kind of game. Both teams going shot for shot, rebound for rebound. What does Brockton have to do to turn on the gas and come away with this one? Man, I think just uh, execute, man. Just move the they ball quicker. That, right? I feel like the chance, like the when they score a basket or when they miss a basket, I think the transition defense needs to be a little bit like more competitive. Like every time they press, they, they always break the press. So like I think the defensive for the key will be for boxers to win this game today. Well, it's 21-21 at halftime. The Hanover Indians all knotted up with the Brockton Boxers, as we mentioned. It is senior night here at Staff Gymnasium. Special ceremony before the game. Let's take a look at that. And after that, we'll have second half action for you. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys. And then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket. And it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you would be kind enough to just direct your attention down here to center court. It is senior night for many of our girls, and we appreciate you coming out. I'd like to turn the microphone over to Coach Chris Conley. So without further ado, Coach. Is it on? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to talk too long. I just wanted to make clear of how enjoyable this season has been. This is the, these girls have been a joy to coach every single day. I've never had to get on them about working harder. They took it upon themselves every day to push themselves. And I'm going to have the players introduce us to you. But before we do that, uh, we have a group of cheerleaders that we want to recognize. So can we have Layla Keen out of there? Yes. I would like to thank these four seniors for coming to all our games and showing us great energy during halftime. Alexia Montero. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria Von George. That's me? Dana Kuna. And Avena Rosa. Um, also, we wanted to present the Hanover girls with a little appreciation of our own. Seniors, bring it over to them. The blue ones. You can just hand them to the coach. They can give one to To present our first senior is Junior Jayla Smith. If Ebony could join me on the court, please. <laughs> hey, Ebony. Okay. Number 24, Jamari Johnson, attending Boston College <laughs> to study nursing. I've known you since I was seven years old, and we were playing soccer and basketball together. It's crazy to think how fast time has gone by. As a junior now, and you a senior, the laughs we've had over the years never changed. Jamari is one person who I know who could bring a smile to anyone's face just by hearing her laugh. Her strength on the field and on the court was not the only thing she brought to a team, 
but also her happiness and compassion for others. Having you as a teammate over the years has been a blessing, and I'm so glad to be able to call you my friend. I'm sad that this is one of the last teams we will play on together, but also happy for the, what the future will bring for you. Our car rides and conversations together will be something I will never forget, and you truly will be a lifetime friend. I love you, JJ. <laughs> is Junior Temi. Um, if Josilma Filmy could come join me on the court, please. season I didn't really have a bond with you but as the season progressed I started to realize how cool of a person you are especially with your blood attitude one thing I liked the most about you about you during practice and games is how you were always persistent on defense and how you always hustled up and down the court with a positive attitude one unfor one unforgettable memory I had with you is during practice when I set a screen on you and tackled you that's truly a moment I will cherish Nevertheless, I wish you the best in your career, and I hope you have an amazing rest of the senior year. And to present our final senior is Junior Annalie Lorenzo. Hello, hello. Oh, if all of Annalicia's family could come to the court, please.
morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Hanover Indians and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Vanilton Xavier of the Brockton High School freshman basketball team. It's 21 to 20, there's a score correction at halftime. They said a three corner taken by Brockton was a two, one official called it one way, the other. Uh, good passing by the Indians leads to another what shot they do is let the play style, pass and cut. Oh man. This game for all the marbles, Jade went for three, that's gonna be short and at least, uh, and Alicia with a great hustle with the two points. Give the boxes a down by one lead. So, a very complicated playoff scenario as Scott again under the basket, putting it up and in. Three point edge for the Indians, 25 to 22. If Brockton wins this game, it's very simple. They're in the playoffs. Yeah, easily. If they lose, Durfee needs to beat New Bedford. That game is getting significantly closer. It was a 14 point lead for the Hilltoppers at the end of the third quarter. It is now 56 to 50 with a minute and 50 seconds to play. Two possession ball game in New Bedford can fire up the threes like man. nobody's business. Yeah. Free throws are gonna win the game. Gotta hit your free throws, man. Tennyson for Wint, who's getting quite the talking to by Coach Connolly. Yeah, I think she was supposed to be on the block both of the plays, and then she probably misunderstood what's going on. Senior night here, as we saw the ceremony. Three seniors on the boxers, and Alicia Fernandez, Jasoma Montron, and Jamari Johnson. Johnson's basketball career could very well end tonight. She's going to Boston College to study medicine and will not be playing ball for the Eagles. Another shot made for the Indians who have come out with some fire. I know, five point lead, it was just a tie game. In the foul. It's gonna be Lauren Kelly. Jilly Smith is getting ready to check in. With six minutes and 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Williams good on her first attempt. Jayla Smith replacing Jamari Johnson. I feel like once we get into the, get to a quick run, I feel like we'll be all set. What a great hustle. Uh, this is Scott, all the way across. <laughs> Too high for the commentary crew. <laughs> be Brockton Ball. Williams from Montron 
Williams with Ryan it. Chase. And away Lorenzo. Went checking in the game. Thing. And at least they're close enough. As well. And that should be an end. What a one. shot what a for Alicia Fernandez. With contact and everything. It's crazy. So the boxer's strategy is try to get Lorenzo on fire. What a great hustle. Jade Warren checking in for De Silma. Italy, Lorenzo, the sharpshooter, in for Josilma Montrand. So Lorenzo. Usually has a point in every game where she turns it on, hits, yeah, hits, a, hits three a couple four threes. threes. Yeah. And she can shoot them from deep. Yeah, she shoots them from deep. So she does. Man. Scott was directly under the basket. Huh. Hand over basketball reminds me of the Spurs, you know. Just pass, move away. A lot of pass passing, screen. not a lot of dribbling. So the discussion is now, should be a jump ball. If it's Hanover's ball off the jump ball, that would not reset the shot clock. So they might put one second on the shot clock. It would be a catch and shoot scenario. Depending on when they call the jump ball. If it was after the 24 second violation, a 30 second violation. So there is one second on the shot clock for Hanover. It's going to be a catch and shoot. Let's see what they're going to pull off right here. Catch and shoot. I'm surprised that it's not Taylor Scott lining up under the basket. She is the one inbounding it. She's already got four points early in this half, so. One second on the shot clock, 5.13 in the quarter. Catch and shoot. Oh, Scott what a low. beautiful And they convert, yeah. you talk about execution. <laughs> right there for J.D. Devlin off the inbounds pass. And that is something, Brockton's got to defend that. Yeah, that's, that's miscommunication, you know? To win games, you got to communicate. They're trying to feed in Alicia down low to get the, to try to draw the foul. So Lorenzo, Jay, three, no, uh, good. no good. Didn't get enough air under it. Scott up to My Catherine Fallon. My advice to Jade, I'm not to Jade. What is he? Lorenzo coming down with this rebound off to Fernandez. Another turnover for the boxers. No to play. You know, Lorenzo's not having a great game, but like, you know, shoot or shoot. So when you open, you take the shot. What a hard screen from Jay. What a beautiful roll. And she gets it in. What a beautiful screen that roll from Jay. 29-27 the score. Brockton down by a couple. This is going to be a backcourt back violation. violation. Their second of the game against the Hanover As Indians. In As Melani has checked in the game for Lorenzo. Gotta give her a little break. Jade getting double teamed. Wow, what a steal from the back from number 35 to go. Look at Fernandez tipping the rebound out of play. It will remain a handover ball. A three is no, no good, good for Gelly. Handover with the rebound. Travel call though. A foul called on Jayla Smith. Smith. Called for the reach. Smith. 
Smith. Oh, what a beautiful C. Man. Three from the top of the key, no good. Jade Wint coming down with the rebound. The way Hanover like, spreads the floor and they move without the balls. Once, something nice to see the way they get open. Milani Montero, her bad angle shot, no good. Jayla Jesus. Smith ripping oh, the rebound. Oh, what a beautiful to Jade pass. Wint, and it's Man, good. And it's good. What a great IQ from Jayla Smith, the smallest guy on the court with nice passing. Long two, no good. Great boy. See Jade went turning it on in the paint for the boxers right now. Williams charging all the way in. Her layup is good. Great block from Hernandez. I think all the boxes need is a little more energy. What a great block. 31 to 29, Brockton on top. You know, Alicia Fernandez coming up with a very big block. And it will be Indians ball, Taylor Scott to inbound. Able to get it to Devlin. A three is no good off the side of the rim. And stepping out of bounds is Aaron Hanover. Aaron has been called for out of bounds. Boxes ball, two minutes and 16 seconds left for the third quarter. It's looking like boxes are gonna try to get into a quick run. Using Jay down low and Alicia down low. Two minutes to go uh, in the third quarter. Brockton turning it over with Lauren Gelly coming up with the steal. Quickly off to Taylor Scott. And a travel Travel call call. against Emily Flint. Wow, that was going to be called the foul. And the Hanover coach saying at best, too many unforced turnovers. Jay posting down low. And with the Jay with the three. And it gets to bounce in. Couple bounces off the rim. The gym went silent. And it's good. Brockton with a five-point edge. 34 to 29. Hanover hawking up a three, trying to answer. And it's unsuccessful. Breaking up the ball off the court. One minute and 16 seconds left. Boxes up by five. Let's see if we get something. What a deep three. And it's it's good. good Williams. And a timeout call from Hanover with one minute, eight seconds left on the clock. What a great one from the boxes. 37 to 29, 108 to go in the third quarter. Brockton up by eight after being down at one point in this quarter by six. And they have turned it on. Contributions from Jade Wynn and Alicia Fernandez and Elizabeth Williams, the latest boxer to hit one from beyond the arc. And they are turning it on. At the right time, if they win, they're in the playoffs. If they lose, they need some help. Last time no was a six point The score of the other game, the last we heard was about five minutes ago. It was 56 to 50 with 150 left to play. That game has concluded. We're just waiting on us on the score. Man. The ball movement for the Indians yet again. As the first dribbler in the possession and there's 13 seconds left on the shot clock. What a great steal, and Alicia on the fast break. And it's an and one! The box is up by nine with three, 41.2 seconds. I told you, man. A run was gonna help them. With 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. And they don't want to have to leave it up to their big three divisional rivals. The boxers want it decided here at Staff Gymnasium. And 
the 35. Oh, no good. And Alicia with a great aggressive. Hold it. Get over half court. You got five seconds. They're, they're going to wave off the five seconds there. <laughs> I know. And Alicia Fernandez with it. Waiting for the last shot. Shot clock um, off. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Fernandez holding on to it. Good. Now flick it to Jade Winnick. Ping pong's around. Now Williams with three on the clock. Back is she shot big? is good. She Elizabeth Williams from a terrible angle off the glass and in. And Brockton carries a 13 point lead into the fourth quarter. It's 42 to 29. The Lady Boxers on top of the Hanover Indians. Man, the Boxers hold these boys down. Uh, hold these girls down. Seven point in the third quarter. They made a run. That's what they needed. trying vigorously to get the score of the New Bedford game. The perfect solution here is Brock and wins. And Durfee loses, that would eliminate, that would eliminate Durfee from playoff contention and Brock and would be in by virtue of winning. Boxers trying to decide it. Here at Staff Gymnasium up by 13, eight minutes on the clock. So a good chunk to decide the Boxers season. They come in at nine and 10, have to win 10 games to get into the dance or win their division title. Both are possible tonight if Durfee beats New Bedford, Brockton gets the big three title. And if they win, they've got the 10 wins necessary. Jade went terrible angle shot, no good. And Hanover with the rebound. Jade went can't control the rebound, it goes out of play. Devlin has it blocked by Williams. Jade Wint coming up with a loose ball. Up to Rebecca Tannis. Tannis out to Fernandez for three is no good. Jump ball, Jump ball called. It will be a handover basketball. Devlin misses a three, Tannis ripping down the rebound. Brockton now has to employ a little bit of a clock game. You want to waste as much of the 30 second clock out as possible before firing up a shot. You're up by 13, six minutes to go, three, four. It's gonna be a foul. Jayla Smith took that three and followed. Pass of Hanover got a steal. Jayla Smith has two shots. Smith at the line for a couple of shots. Hitting her first attempt. It's all going to come down to free throws. Bigger Brockton can get this lead before Hanover turns it on. The better. Indians 44 to 31, 6.20 to go. Tannis shot no good. Hanover with the rebound. Now Annalisa Fernandez with the steal. Fernandez stopping, popping for two is good. Yeah. 
46-31, Brockton up by 15. A three, no good, in and out. Tannis with the rebound. 5.30 to go in the game, 46-31, Brockton up by 15. And pulling away. Hanover's going to call a timeout. Well, it is now official. The score of the Durfee New Bedford game, the final 61 53. Durfee with the win. Brockton has clinched a playoff berth and will be in the dance. Regardless of the outcome here, Brockton has the big three divisional crown and will be in the MIAA South sectional playoffs. They will be on the road in their first playoff matchup. It will be a preliminary rounder. But anything can happen in the tournament. So Durfee taking care of business, 61-53, the final score between those two. Brockton clinching the big three divisional title. And there's a three for Emily Flynn to draw the Indians within 12. for Scott underneath, and she is fouled. We will be talking to head coach Chris Connolly after the conclusion of this game, get his thoughts on this effort as well as making the playoffs in his first season as coach of the Brockton Lady Boxers. Along two, no good. Jade Wynn with the rebound, quickly off to Elizabeth Williams. 4.15 to go in the fourth. Brockton up by 12, looking to pull away even further. Jade Wynn out to Fernandez. She thought about the deep three. Instead gives it to Tannis out to Williams. 10 on the shot clock. Back to Tannis. Scott comes up with a steal and fouled by Elizabeth Williams. Three fifty-three to go in the fourth. Brockton up by twelve. Hanover with the ball. Block pass, but Scott underneath the basket. Terrible angle as she was falling out of bounds. Her shot no good, Brockton with the rebound. And Alicia Fernandez for three was blocked from behind. Gail Smith tipping the rebound to Jade Wint. And now Tannis out to Smith. She fires up a three, this one short. Tannis grabbing the rebound. Tannis fiery pass over to Elizabeth Williams. Three and a half to go. The fresh shot clock for the boxers who are gonna waste even more time off of this clock before they shoot. Five second violation on the boxers. Off the glass and in for Lauren Gelly. Two 
takes over. 3.04 to go. Stockton's gonna call a timeout. It's a very fiery coach, Chris Connolly, in the boxers' huddle. So the boxers will face a couple of the options, top teams in the state. Marshfield, Mansfield always up there. Newton face most likely the top seed in the South Sectional Tournament. Good for Catherine Fallon. 46-39, it's a seven point ball game, 2.45 to go. The boxers will be matched up probably against Newton South or Braintree as Fernandez's shot is blocked. Now in alone is Lauren Kelly, her layup is good. 46 to 41, the score two and a half to go in the fourth. And a foul is called. Taylor Bowen against Taylor Scott. Taylor Scott. Lorenzo back in the game. She replaces Tannis. Fernandez to rebound, uh, inbound, excuse me. She gets it to Jade Wint. As far as the Crockett boys team goes, they are down to Catholic Memorial 77 to 58 at the end of the third quarter. They're looking to avoid their second loss on the year after falling to Newton North. in for Wint, Wint spinning with it. Hook shot, no good, but she was fouled. The foul is on number 34, Emily Flynn for first. A couple of the options for the boxers, Newton South, Braintree, and Christian Feehan, as well as Mansfield. Just a few of the options that'll be at the top of the South Sectional Bracket. The brackets come out next Saturday. We will have them for you on Twitter at the Brockton Channel. Both boys, girls, and if the hockey team makes the playoffs, those brackets as well. I'm throwing out a play off of. Well, they're going to call a foul on this. Kelly has her third personal. Fernandez at the line. It's 122 to go. Boxers up by eight. Second loss might not be a terrible thing for the boxers men's team. That would get them a lower seed and possibly a more favorable matchup. We've seen a couple of 16 seed updates the last few years. All the way down. Fernandez coming away with the loose ball. Has nowhere to go with it. Brockton's gonna call a timeout. 51-41, 10-point edge for the boxers who look like they're gonna take care of business and hang on. 109 to go in the fourth quarter here on senior night at Staff Gymnasium for the Lady Boxers. 
This is the last game of their season. The boys team has two more away games after tonight at Catholic Memorial. The Lady Boxers will have a full week off to get ready for the playoffs. Probably have a few days off in the beginning of the week. No practice to rest their legs. They've had a grueling stretch of games, including last week they had three games in four days. The reset is a good thing for the Boxers. They will go in refreshed for the playoffs and clinching a berth by virtue of Durfee beating New Bedford. And hanging on here. All the way down. Lorenzo has yet to make a field goal tonight. Ten on the shot clock, Jade went with it. Now to Lorenzo, five on the shot clock. Bucket waved off on a whistle. Game over time is on number three. It's going to be a reach. Dottie Tilden. Dottie Tilden. His first personal. In the game for the game is number 21, Bridget O'Connor. Taylor Scott, the most effective Indian tonight, has come out of the game. This men's team keeping it interesting. 88-76, they went on a 14-2 run to cut the CM lead to 11. Free throw to make it 88-76. Three minutes left in that one. Number 33, and Alicia Fernandez shooting one and one. One on one opportunity for Annalicia Fernandez. The boxers lead stands at 10. <laughs> Missing her first and only attempt. So it's going to play with Fernandez. Uh, 31 seconds to go. Caroline Gordon, the junior, is going to come in. Hanover has accepted defeat here with 31 seconds to go. Gordon shot no good. The shot clock is off. Brockton's gonna waste it out. 51 to 41, Brockton clinching the playoffs by virtue of two ways, both winning 10 games and the big three divisional title. The buzzer sounds and the boxers have a week plus before their first tournament game, 51 to 41. Your final score from Staff Gymnasium, the Brockton boxers getting it done against the Hanover Indians. And they move on to the South sectional tournament. Game balls for each team. You gotta give it to Taylor Scott. Can give it to Taylor Scott for the Indians, for the boxers, as has been the case all year. And Alicia Fernandez getting it done for the boxers, both leading in points and rebounds. And we're going to hear from Coach Chris Connolly. A 10 point win for the boxers. And hopefully you have stats. <laughs> We don't have stats, but we've got something even better. The Durfee Hilltoppers took yeah. care of business against the New Bedford Whalers, winning by 12. We knew you were in the playoffs midway through the third quarter, but your team pulled through, got a 10-point win against the Hanover Indians, and took care of business to get in by virtue of two ways. Yeah, it was great. We scored um, 22 points in that third quarter. We, we just moved the ball well. We were, um, we were making it. We were driving it. You know, a lot of times we just settle for the threes. Today we're actually taking the ball hard to the basket. I think we're going to be um, tough to beat when we get in there. Uh, I'm looking forward to whoever we're matched up with. Scrappy first half. It was 21-20 at the break. 
talk about what changed from half one to half two, how you guys were able to pull away. Uh, we tried to take away their transition game. We, we felt that they scored most of their points um, on transition baskets in the first half, and we focused on that, and we, um, we kind of, I mean, they scored, I believe, 21, and so 20, but I think, you know, the third quarter we kind of we got to them a All little right, bit so there. Let's talk about the upcoming schedule. You've got a full week off, no games before the, the seedings even come out. What's the, what's the week going to look like? How do you keep the legs fresh, but the players prepared and conditioned for the playoffs? Um, we're going to take off until Tuesday. Tuesday we're going to practice. Uh, we have a scrimmage set up with Silver Lake, who is a, one of the better D2 teams in the league. Uh, they won their the league, that, whatever that is, the Patriot League. So um, we're looking for that. We're going to do a lot of weightlifting, some conditioning early, and then we plan on playing Monday or Tuesday, so we're going to but um, be ready to go then. So you finished the season 10-10 and 10 with a big three divisional title in your first year as head coach. Give us a, a little synopsis of your season. Um, the girls worked really hard. Never, like, never once did I ever have to say to them, pick it up in practice. And that's something that I was used to, having to get all over um, my players in my previous place. And this year, um, th th they just really wanted it. They, I mean, people had counted them out early. Um, they graduated a lot of people from a team that only won 11 games last year, and to finish with 10 is pretty impressive. With it was all it was basically all hard work with these girls. Coach, thank you. Congratulations on the playoff berth. We'll see you in the MIAA South Sectional bracket. Meanwhile, the final score 51 to 41. The Brockton Lady Boxers getting the win here on Senior Night against the Hanover Indians by 10 points. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, Vanilton Xavier, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We'll see you in the playoffs.